10 Reasons Why This Ancient Monument Blows Britain's Earthwork Myths Out of the Water Introduction For a ditch that still carries water and once carried boats, Cardike gets shockingly little mention in mainstream archaeology. That's not just curious, it's catastrophic for the credibility of those who claim to interpret Britain's prehistoric and early historic earthworks. Because if one linear ditch turns out to be a working canal with measurable gradient, scientific dating, cargo evidence and no locks, then maybe, just maybe, the whole Saxon defensive ditch fantasy collapses. Here are ten undeniable reasons why Cardike demands to be the centrepiece of any earthwork debate and why ignoring it is a damning indictment of both academia and the clickbait content crowd. 1. Car Dyke Holds Water The uni ignored proof For once, we have a dike that still holds water thousands of years later and yet it's been largely ignored by archaeologists. Why? Because even the establishment has been forced to admit it's at least Roman, centuries before the Saxons ever arrived. That single fact alone should have sent shockwaves through every earthwork discussion in Britain. But it gets worse for them. Unlike other so-called dikes that are little more than dried up crop lines or eroded ridges, car dike actively carries water today without pumps or modern maintenance. And it does so by using natural hydrology. It tracks springs, paleo channels and contours. The water isn't a fluke, it's engineered. Modern canals struggle with long-term viability. Victorian ones break down in less time than it took Cardike to outlive them. This canal, that shouldn't be, is the empirical smoking gun that makes the entire defensive ditch theory look like child's play. 2. It was found with a boat inside proving its role in trade. Let's state this plainly. A boat was found at the bottom of Cardike, carrying cargo from Horning Sea. Not just wood and planks, but a Roman boatload of traded pottery. That isn't some blurry interpretation of post holes or hypothetical ritual deposits and that's a working freight canal in action. And it didn't run flat like a modern canal, it had gradient, yet the boat moved through it. That alone busts another myth, the idea that a canal must be flat or filled with locks to function. Cardike shows us that early canal systems could operate on natural slope and hydrological flow using primitive yet effective methods like uh, controlled weirs or paddles. This isn't just a quirky detail, this is the central truth about Britain's forgotten transport systems. They were real, they worked, and they predate every medieval myth people still cling to. Third, it predates the Saxons by millennia. Mainstream archaeology likes to box car dike neatly into the Roman period. But a closer look combining lidar, hydrology, artifact stratigraphy and even water table analysis suggests something much older. The gradient following route, the lack of Roman lock systems and the natural watercourse integration all imply prehistoric origins. In fact, English heritage acknowledges that many of the 1,500 plus dikes across Britain are Bronze Age in date. That means dike building was not a Saxon invention nor a Roman one. It was native, indigenous, advanced and older than most academic models are comfortable with. So why is car dike constantly excluded from earthwork discussions? And because it's the inconvenient truth, the one that doesn't fit the narrative. Once you admit uh, car dike isn't Saxon or military, you have to rethink every other dike in Britain. And that's a step too far for those defending century-old academic assumptions. 
4. It has a gradient, but no locks. Canals are supposed to be flat. Everyone learns this, or if not flat, then stepped with locks. But car dyke defies this rule, and yet it still flows. It has elevation change, yet no locks. How is this possible? Because car dyke was built with hydrology in mind. The route follows springs and contours, allowing gravity to do the work. Springs feed the canal from higher terrain, and water flow was likely managed by weirs or primitive paddle systems, not mechanical locks which came much later. This isn't a fringe theory. It matches what early Victorian canals used before locks became standard, regulated flow control and spring-fed energy. If anything, Carr Dyke shows an understanding of natural slope engineering that historians have simply failed to credit. It's time we stop assuming locks were needed in the ancient world just because modern canal textbooks say so. 5. It follows the water table, not defensive terrain. A defensive ditch should, by all logic, run along strategic high points, ridges, lookouts and natural choke points, but Cardike doesn't. It meanders across the lowlands, carefully hugging springs, ancient riverbeds and the contour lines of the landscape. And this isn't bad planning, it's brilliant hydrological design. LIDAR shows that Carr Dyke tracks the natural flow of groundwater, which itself follows fractal branching patterns through subsurface geology. Carr Dyke's course mirrors these patterns, routing water efficiently through what was once a wet, navigable landscape. This is not accidental. It's proof that the builders understood how water behaves and designed accordingly. That's not military engineering, that's environmental infrastructure. Six, it's not fortified, defended or manned. There are no ramparts, no, no towers, no palisades, no weapon caches, nothing you would expect from a genuine defensive installation. No manning posts, no, no tactical vantage points, no evidence of military uh, occupation, and that's because Car Dyke was never meant to be defended. It was meant to be used. From a tactical perspective, its location makes no sense as a defence. It skirts lowland terrain and wetland, areas easy to bypass and of no strategic advantage. If the Romans or Saxons wanted a defensive line, they'd have built it on the ridge, not in the marsh. Worse still for the defensive theory, it's too wide and too shallow to serve as an obstacle. Even a half-asleep raiding party could hop across it or walk through it in summer. But make it a watercourse. That makes sense. That width is perfect for flat-bottomed boats. The shallow slope is ideal for managing flow. What Car Dyke does reflect is infrastructure, something designed to move goods, manage water, and possibly serve agricultural or trade needs. That historians still pitch it as a defensive barrier is an act of historical negligence, not interpretation. This wasn't built to repel enemies. It was built to connect people and places. Seven, it connects economic zones, not battlefields. Car Dyke was not laid out to repel invaders. It was laid out to move goods, grain, pottery and people. It aligns with known Roman and prehistoric economic zones. To the south lies Cambridge, a well-documented production centre for Roman pottery and agricultural goods. To the north, Lincoln, a vital Roman city that was both a military and trading hub. The dike itself snakes through productive Fenland at tapping into river systems and lowland routes that allowed flat-bottomed boats to access key distribution points. It would have enabled the bulk movement of resources from inland production areas out to the east coast or across to the Midlands. This is not a defensive line, it's a commercial highway. And unlike other dikes where claims of military use are based on guesswork, Car Dyke 
gives us empirical evidence, a cargo boat, pottery cargo, and intact hydrology. It is the model for a prehistoric logistics network, the ancient motorway of its time. To call it a ditch is like calling the M1 a gravel track. 8. Engineers recognise it as a canal. Historians don't ask a canal engineer, and they'll tell you car dyke behaves exactly like a canal, from slope gradients to spring-fed input points, from embankment reinforcements to flow behaviour. It's textbook hydrological infrastructure. Ask a historian or, or archaeologist. You'll hear about Saxons, boundaries and ritual significance. One profession is using data, the other stories. And here's where the real divide shows. Today's historians and weekend explorers often walk along hilltop trails and look at steep embankments, thinking they're seeing military architecture, but they're not seeing the landscape as it was. At the time of construction, these earthworks were surrounded by dense tree cover, underbrush, and a waterlogged landscape. The environment was radically different. Even modern OS maps reinforce the illusion. They plot the route, not the physical banks and ditches that still survive, or don't. Many supposed linear features on these maps are conceptual rather than empirically verified. Moreover, the romantic idea of canal boats drifting lazily through the countryside couldn't be further from reality. These weren't pleasure routes, they were brutally practical, engineered for moving heavy goods. Boatmen would often walk the banks using ropes or animals to haul their cargo over gradients. They weren't passengers, they were hauliers. The canal was a tool, not a scenic journey. Cardike is a functioning piece of industrial infrastructure, not a footnote to Saxon folklore. The fact that engineers see this clearly while historians do not says everything. Nice. LIDAR shows. It was designed to flow and modified over time. LIDAR mapping doesn't just confirm that Cardite was engineered for water flow. It reveals a dual phase design that evolved over time. The original sections, which appear as meandering, contour following paths, reflect prehistoric engineering that closely follows natural watercourses and groundwater patterns. These early routes were likely laid out to access spring heads and maintain gentle gradients through undulating terrain. Later, the Romans stepped in, not to replace, but to enhance this existing network. They added straighter, more engineered segments, likely to improve water flow through marsh area areas and create more direct connections between economic zones. These upgrades demonstrate Roman pragmatism in adapting and augmenting older infrastructure rather than erasing it. This dual phase model, prehistoric ingenuity coupled with Roman adaptation, makes Car Dyke a layered landscape of evolving technology and it serves as a model for reinterpreting other earthworks that may also bear hidden complexities beneath the topsoil. LIDAR makes that possible. 10. It's ignored because it breaks the narrative. Car. Dyke is the archaeological elephant in the room. It ticks all the boxes that should make it central to our understanding of Britain's ancient infrastructure yet it's nowhere to be found in major discussions about linear earthworks. Why? Because it's a narrative breaker. It doesn't fit the Saxon defence myth that academics have repeated for generations. It doesn't have ramparts, it wasn't built on a ridge, and it didn't separate warring kingdoms. It carried water, not warriors. To accept Car Dyke as a canal is to accept that Wands Dyke, Offers Dyke, and hundreds of other dykes may also be misunderstood. That would mean admitting that archaeology has mislabeled key monuments for decades, if not centuries. So instead, they ignore it. They avoid referencing it in academic journals. They leave it off comparative studies. 
they don't teach it in the university curriculum. Because if Carr Dyke is real, and it demonstrably is, then the whole Saxon-centric model starts to unravel. This isn't just avoidance, it's archaeological malpractice. Conclusion. The earthwork that should rewrite British history. Carr Dyke isn't an exception. It's the control sample, the reference point, the benchmark. It proves that prehistoric and Roman Britain had the engineering skill and hydrological knowledge to construct vast canal systems without locks, without pumps, and without our modern assumptions. It demolishes the false dichotomy that dikes are either Saxon boundary markers or defensive trenches. It demands that we revisit every linear earthwork in Britain through the lens of empirical data, not inherited theory. This isn't just about one canal, it's about how we do archaeology, about valuing physical evidence over folklore, about admitting when we've been wrong, and finally starting to get it right. Cardike still holds water, but can our institutions? This video is part of a continuing series, all of which are also available on our blog. You'll find the web address both at the end of this video and in the YouTube description below. If you enjoyed this content, please like and subscribe. We're adding new archaeological sites every day on both the channel and the website. Thank you.